Welcome and thank you for joining us in season three of the Religion Podcast, where a rabbi and a reverend walk into a podcast and talk real about religion. Hey, Joel. Happy Wednesday, I believe. <laughs> it is. It's another one of those Wednesdays. Makes me think of that. What was that commercial with the camel in it? Hey, Jerry, what day is it? What day is it? What day is it, Jerry? Oh, I know where you're going. <laughs> it's hump day, Jerry. It's my favorite day. Huh. Sounds like Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, um, my gosh. What's going on? It, it, I, over here, I have crews working on my house. I had plumbers and electricians and- Ted ex- Cruz is at your house? Yeah. External carpentry <laughs> and HVAC guys and insulation guys and crawl space people. And they are trying to make this 1890s house that cost us $1,000 a month to heat to uh, finally have it insulated enough to where I'm not killing the planet just to be semi-comfortable. Right. But it is, boy, it's a mess. When will that be done? Tomorrow. They're all done tomorrow. It's been two. Oh, that's great. Yeah, of the, all the insulation HVAC stuff anyway, and the plumbing. I've still got external carpentry stuff to do. And well, you? Muscle. Just, uh, you know, working on uh, David's two months old today. Uh, Aaron's second birthday is Sunday. We're planning a birthday party for him. A real life fire truck is coming to the house. That's exciting. <laughs> wow. He's going to lose his mind. And uh, that's it. Just, you know, a little summer planning, some long range planning and thinking about uh, kind of what we envision for certain programs in our synagogue. And uh, yeah. Well, y'all don't do anything different. But, You've got a book that tells you exactly what to do, exactly which Sabbaths to do it for the rest of time, right? Yeah, that's all we have to do. Yeah, you just, just follow, follow the book. That. Yeah, just follow the book. If, don't change anything. If only. Don't play. Don't experiment. If, oh yeah, definitely don't experiment. Um, but what are we talking about today, Joel? I think I think we're going to do a little wrap up, huh? Yeah, that's the end of our season, and we're going to take a summer break, a summer Sabbath, uh, and then uh, we'll come back for the next season in the fall. But yeah, we're going to reflect on where we've been so far since we've been doing this, what got us started doing it, why we do it, what we've learned from doing it together, and open it up to. Uh, to people to send in tweets and emails to us of what they've enjoyed and appreciated about it and what they're hoped for in the future from us. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, depending on, uh, what I'm doing, it either feels like we started like a week ago or, you know, five years ago. And, uh, I, I know that's true for many things in people's lives, whenever they do something routinely, uh, time kind of flies, but yeah, let, let's look back on, and talk about it a little bit. I think that's a great idea. You know, on a very basic level, Joel, and I've said this before, is I I think that doing this gives just gives me an opportunity to connect with you. And, you know, I am a part, as you were when you lived here, of – uh, the Interfaith Clergy Partnership here in Athens. Um, and, you know, we have programs and meetings and whatnot, but there is something, I think, to be said for really kind of getting into it, uh, getting into serious issues and questions of faith in kind of a one-on-one conversation where, you know, people can be honest with each other and not have that awkwardness of, oh, did I hurt their feelings? Am I disagreeing with them? And, you know, you and I certainly share that rapport. And so on a very kind of selfish level, our conversations kind of help me to to think through either something I'm thinking about for a sermon or uh, something about an issue that I'm facing at Temple. And the fact that other people listen is, is kind of a bonus, um, but, you know, for me, the, the real prize, so to speak, is, is the conversation itself. Yes. I, and, and that's it for me, too, in a lot of ways. It's, part of it's just being, staying connected to you. You were uh, an important part of my spiritual growth and leadership learning when I was there in Athens, and I would hate to lose that and to back up and, 
and start all over again. So I'm I'm glad we've had that. The other weird weird thing is this feels in some ways to me like a safer space to have tough conversation than a pulpit or a church. I don't know if if you feel like that, but I feel like right here, you and I can take a few risks. We can make a mistake with each other. And because of who we are, we'll instantly show grace. And it's a kind of grace I don't always feel like I'm going to be able to get as easily from my own people or my other clergy in my in my own faith. Uh- yeah, so the, the distinction I was going to make is, you know, neither of us work for or with the other one. So, you know, there is an ease there in that, you know, I, I mean, I can theoretically imagine something I would say that would upset you to such a degree as to really hurt our relationship. But that that's theoretically. I mean, it's not actually going to happen, nor would it the other way. Um, and I think because we're not, I mean, we're accountable to one another for this podcast, certainly, and you certainly do a great job of holding me accountable. Um, but in a different way than, you know, we're accountable to our congregants for really, you know, the, the, however long of their lives, they're members of our places of worship, you know, we're accountable to them. Um, with regard to other clergy, I think it takes time. I mean, I, I, and I, and I think that's the, one of the benefits of us doing this and per, you know, other people doing something similar. It doesn't have to be a podcast, just, you know, get together with coffee with a friend of a different faith. But that is to say, you know, when I don't remember actually meeting you, like I don't remember the moment meeting you, um, <laughs> because I'm old and I don't remember things, but I know that we didn't, start immediately with this kind of rapport. I mean, we I, I would like to think we liked each other and, and we realized, you know, we had some things in common and we wanted to be in touch. But that came with trust and experience and doing some things together. And um, I think it was one of the uh, uh, Thanksgiving services where we really kind of bonded. Mm-hmm. The very first one. Yeah, just the six of us. That That really did it. So I'm looking at our lifetime podcast statistics, and I just wonder, if I ask you some questions, I wonder where your gut will go. Um, What do you think were the the highest download volume times in our podcast? Like, think about what was going on in the world, and we made comments about those. What do you you think was the highest uh, download seasons in our podcast? Well, my gut reaction is anything that was the most controversial. I mean, that, that <laughs> seems that that seems like that would get a lot of traffic. So, um, and maybe some of the things with the difficult texts, which which we did previously. But now, now I'm really curious, Joel. Yeah, we rose. Tell me how ro- we rose pretty fast, right to February and March of 2021. What do you think was the big? controversy around then february of 21 so that was just over or oh no a year and a half ago um oh the 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 insurrection that's it it. yeah yeah that one's way in there and then last november was uh the next highest season for us and I'm not sure why that one. And then our third highest, most popular season is May, just last month. So um, it's not as high as the insurrection month <laughs> or last November, but um, we are we're getting the maximum number of downloads as much as we've gotten in the past. How how many total <laughs> downloads do you think all time downloads of our fifty or plus episodes? Thirty two hundred. 3,500, yes. Oh, wow. I know. Um, And sure, the United States is our number one audience. What countries are the next three most popular countries for our podcast? Oh, oh, Joel, these are are fun uh, analytics to to look at. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to guess not Israel. But correct, uh, <laughs> not Israel, yeah. not Israel. I have no idea. England, Australia, UK, and Canada are in that next three. Portugal, for some reason, 
is in there as well. And I think it might be because I had a family that listens at, of this church who traveled to Portugal for a month. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sure that's what it was. Yeah. That that's why? great. Uh, and, and what's interesting is how people listen. A lot, um, Still half of us, half the people who listen, listen through Apple. Um, and that's 50 something percent. And the, the largest percentage after that is 6%. So Spotify, Chrome, Podbean, Overcast, Pandora, Google Podcast, Stitcher, um, Overcast, all those start dropping off really fast. It's, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. That's what I, incidentally, Overcast is, is what I use, mm-hmm. uh, which, which I think is great. Um, Going back to the the peak moments, it, it does, you know, the, and, and of course, we're not hoping for another insurrection as much as we like people to listen to our podcast. Um, but I, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's kind. Of, I think it relates to the adage that there are no atheists in foxholes. It's like you know, people are in even non-believers, so to speak. I think are interested in what religion has to say, even if they themselves don't adhere to it during times of crisis and controversy and problem. I, I just think it, that that's part of our DNA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's true. It, the capital offense, the attack, what we called capital offense and the attack on truth, um, that is our second most popular episode. If you had to guess hmm. which episode was even more popular than that, what would you guess? Hmm. Uh, I'm thinking life after death, but I I, I don't think that's it though. <laughs> uh, give me a clue. Give me give me an interesting clue without telling me. Well, that wouldn't be fair. <laughs> Uh, listeners, do you see what I do? You see what I deal with? Um, all right, I, 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 I I'm flummoxed. <laughs> it was our our episode called "That's Not Fair." <laughs> oh, well done, Joel. I did well give done. you a clue. <laughs> you did. My goodness. Yeah, you, you just and yet again, see what I have to deal with, listeners. <laughs> yeah. And that was the one, the way we described it was, like, if you take the Bible seriously, it's hard to read through its entirety without seeing God do unfair stuff. And so what do we do with these tough texts? How do we handle the disconnect between the texts, what it says that God did, and what we believe God does and and who God is that would conflict with what the Bible says God did or said? That's our most popular episode still to date. And it's funny because in some ways, I think that that tension is our entire podcast in the sense, not, not, not tied specifically to the words of the Bible, but kind of the, the way I talk about it at Temple sometimes is the gap between the ideals of our prayers and the reality of, of our lives. Yeah. And what do we do? You know, what, what do we do with teachings? that are different than things we believe today, whether morally or just kind of from a, you know, anachronistic perspective. What do, what do we do when there are inconsistencies between who we see ourselves to be and what the Bible or, you know, the Torah, the New Testament says? And I think that tension is, is necessary. That in and of itself isn't a problem. The problem is not thinking about it or mm-hmm. not, and not taking it seriously. And I think that in some ways that's, the you, you, that's been the mo of our conversations is taking it seriously. Yeah, and and the God behind it seriously, the God that we've all been trying to point to and write about and preach about and teach and follow all that. Uh, and and I think that's why people struggle with faith in general and why they appreciate watching leaders who confess that there is stuff we think we know, there is stuff that we hope we know. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff we don't, um, and and how do we? Like I had a, a a guy talk to me recently about faith, and he was trying to understand how I do faith and how we as this corner of Christianity do faith. He's from a different corner of Christianity, but we talked about it, and he goes, "Well, what, what do you do with like doubt and questions? Are those okay in in your church?" And I'm like, "God, ah, they're essential," <laughs> and and he goes, "I I don't understand that, like." from the faith practices I came through, we were always trying to erase the doubt. 
And I'm like, well, the more yeah. you, the more you learn about God, like only the more questions you have. Sure, you learn more, but just the perimeter of the expanding circle gets bigger. So the the edge of the mystery gets larger. And uh, and he he struggled to go there with me, but it's it's something that I think you and I both in embody where others in our faith traditions are trying to make it smaller and more manageable. You and I are trying to, I, I think, make it bigger and and enjoy the mystery. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. And and as I've said before, I think that that is, in my experience, that is more true for more liberal religions and denominations where um, where re- revelation is an ongoing thing and didn't quote unquote happen at a particular time and then it's done. Uh, you know, th- th- this idea that we are part of, we are part of revelation. We are part of not only creation, of course, but of creating in partnership with God is a different paradigm that I, I don't know. And again, not necessarily judging, but I, I don't, I don't think that that is as elevated of a priority as it is for us. I played with the kids. uh, We have a moment in the middle of worship where the younger ones come forward and I read something. So I read them Genesis 1 and 2 and I handed them my Hebrew Bible and ask, uh, which of y'all can read? And they, they, you know, most of them raised their hand, and I handed them my Hebrew Bible, and I said, well, open it and read it for me. And they opened it. I'm like, no, no, that's the back. You got to open it from the other. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, right. Uh, but then we were talking about what it means to be created in the image of God, and one of the things I suggested was that we, too, are creators. Like, one, th- one of the things that sets us apart from the rest of creation is that we co-create with God, um, and to recreate, which we often mean to play, um, it means like to do an old thing, create in a new way, re, is fun. So, what does it look like to do church, to do faith, to do life in ways that feel old but are new? And that process of recreating is a godly, joyful process. Um, yeah, and it, the kids, I, I might have been over their heads, but I, I try to really simplify what it means to play. God is a one who plays and enjoys play. That's great. Yeah, I've seen you do that, or the, the reading to kids. <laughs> so, gosh, what, what else should we talk about in future episodes? Are we finished? Have we covered it all? Yeah, re, re, we're, religion is all clear now. I think we got it. I think we got it. I think, you know, to a certain degree, I I kind of want us to delve into viewpoints that aren't our own in a way that isn't where we're kind of honest enough not just to pick them apart because that's not what we believe, but to kind of have a, almost an empathetic viewpoint of, well, why why is this the belief for some people or for, you know, for this religion or, 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 and things like that? Because, you know, we, you know, you and I represent two very specific denominations of two very specific worldviews that, of course, not everybody shares. And I think that would be worthwhile to, to think about. Mm-hmm. And, and I find that you and I do tend to bend ourselves. We, we can't help but see the theological issues and political and social issues. So those issues are probably the ones where we have thought it through, we felt our way through it, we've kind of planted our flag, you know, not, we haven't cemented it in the ground, but we've stuck it in the ground uh, towards a certain uh, angle on most of these issues. But we realize, holy cow, there are people in our congregations and communities that are the exact opposite on so many of those social and theo- uh, political issues. What does it look like? Is there a reasonable defense for standing in in that other space and for planting your flag over there? Can we find that in reasonable scriptural and theological and and traditional viewpoints from our from our faith traditions? Yeah, 
Yeah, I, but that's something I've been thinking about. What, what about you? Oh, gosh. In I, terms of things to do. Yeah, Bible study, but I don't know what that would look like. Um, I don't know if you know the, like, Jordan Peterson. I, I still listen to some of his stuff. Uh, he's a thinker, a philosopher out of Canada, I think, and uh, he he did a whole series on Genesis. He's doing one on Exodus, and it he's brought a lot of people back into the old stories. He kind of does it from a scholastic viewpoint, a semi-Christian viewpoint, um, and but he's happy to have conversations with anybody. There's some stuff about him that really rub me, <laughs> rubs me the wrong way, but to watch the popularity that his reviews of real books of the Bible re- reemerged in humanity, it, it reminded me that for people who probably don't go to church or synagogue, they are still deeply interested and what the Bible does and doesn't mm. say. And I I have found in the churches that I've served, people think they know what the Bible says. But if you actually read it with them, they are shocked to find what else it says and what it doesn't say and how it says that thing that they thought in a way that's different than what they heard from their preacher or oh, pastor yeah. or their parents. And, and then when you... And then the other weird one is like, wait, that verse that they always heard one way is right before the other verse that they heard another way. Those are connected. Well, well, how do we do that now? It changes how we hear both of them because they're right beside one another. Little moments like that. I don't know if a a real-life podcast Bible study would be interesting between the two of us, but we could grab a prophet or a historical or a writing or, uh, you know, something from back there and see what happens. Yeah, I think there's something to that. Let let's kind of workshop that a little bit. I I like that actually. You're the pro though. <laughs> we would have in to what in what sense? We would have to stay at the books that are like your domain, you know? Oh god. <laughs> I I study them, but <laughs> well, oh my god. Well, there's a lot in that. In in what you call the Old Testament, there's certainly plenty of overlap of, of what the two of us find right. uh, important and interesting. Well, so just like not, telling not somebody there might have been three Isaiahs, like three versions of Isaiah that got melded together into one scroll of Isaiah from three different time periods in the life of the people. Like you just hear jaws hit floor as soon as you say that out loud to them. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so we have, have some ideas, and then what, what's uh, what's going on the rest of the summer? Gosh, we're going to take a, a week off, go to the beach. We're going to come to Atlanta and see a few games. I'm going to work on the house now that it's air-conditioned. <laughs> okay, now, it's, you said uh, Atlanta. Yeah. What about... What about uh, oh, yeah, we're know. coming out to Athens. We're going to Authentic Brewery, a, a couple friends of ours, our co-owners of Authentic Brewery right there, and we're going to go into their tap room well, that we saw it was being built and designed, and it was mid-construction, but it didn't get open before I moved away, and now it's open, and there are people in it and enjoying uh, good beer, so I'm looking at tasting Paul and Don's <laughs> yummies. Beautiful. Well, we might have to do something. Maybe we can order a live, you know, do something live or something. Um, <laughs> nice. I'll bring you some Eastern Shore bourbon for your bourbon. Perfect. Room. Perfect. Um, but, Joel, this has been uh, not only fun, but interesting, important. I think we've tackled some some real issues and, and we'll continue to do that. You bet. And and listeners, if y'all have ideas, remember we're at Religion Podcast at gmail.com. You'll find Eric uh, or me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, almost every show note has uh, ways to find us by email or link so that you can give us a tap and let us know what, what you think we should be discussing with one another on your behalf uh, in our future episodes. Absolutely. Uh, well, stay stay safe, everyone. Keep it real. Keep thinking about the issues that are important to you and how they relate to religion. And uh, we'll see you uh, in a in a few months. Thank you for joining us on the Real Religion Podcast today, where a rabbi and a reverend walk into a podcast and talk real about religion. I'm Reverend Joel Talbert. And on behalf of Rabbi Eric Linder, 
and all the religion fans out there. We thank you for being with us today and invite you to send us any feedback or suggestions or topic ideas to religionpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, keep it real.